160th contact. Wednesday, February 3, 1982, 11.41 p.m. Billy says I already thought that no one would come today. Quetzal says unfortunately, there wasn't any opportunity at an earlier time, but for your birthday, as you know, we will always visit you. Billy says that pleases me. Quetzal says everyone greets you in love. Billy says for which I also thank you all in love, my friend. Quetzal says unfortunately, Electra didn't find the necessary time for a visit. Billy says aha, again, you rumble around where you shouldn't. Quetzal says no, I just saw in your eyes that you also expected her. Billy says oh, I see. Quetzal says from her, I should give you special thanks. Billy says what for? Quetzal says you're asking this? You know perfectly well, nevertheless, what impression you've made with her. Billy says aha, and was that so wrong? Quetzal says no, on the contrary, you presented yourself in such a way as you always do with new acquaintances, as it corresponds to your actual being. It's something that I admire in you, when I consider that you live among the earth human beings and behave completely differently with these because it is necessary. Billy says I would also prefer it if it could be different. The damned masquerade bothers me more and more, I can tell you. Quetzal says for my part, I couldn't do it in any case. Billy says already for a long time, you've no longer lived among barbarians, and you only have to deal with a single one, with me. Quetzal says I often wish that I could remove this burden from you because I see the difficulties in your life very well. Billy says don't start with that again. Rather, tell me what I should do, for I have a problem again. You know that we wanted to buy a lithograph camera, but now the money isn't sufficient again because we need it for other things. Quetzal says yes, I know, you already spoke of it at our last meeting. In the meantime, I've dealt with these concerns and calculated that for the time being, you must do without this camera device because the other incidental expense is of much greater importance. Billy says well, how do I say that to Benedette? Because she thinks that she would have a job at the center by means of this camera, through which she would no longer have to go to work abroad, particularly because of the child, since she doesn't want to entrust this to anyone. Quetzal says that is very illogical, as I already explained to you the last time. On the one hand, it isn't possible for this device to be purchased for financial reasons, and on the other hand, her financial assistance wouldn't be secured if she would rely on this work with this camera device. It would require a solid customer base, but this could in no case be produced in an appropriate amount of time. As I calculated, a period of several years would be required before the necessary customer base would be produced, which would make a corresponding activity profitable. And on the other hand, since you live on the earth also other laws prevail in all things than those that prevail with us. It would also probably be impossible for Benedette to find work where she can always have the child around. So it is good if she gathers her thoughts and is clear about the fact that after the birth of the boy, almost no way can be found, such that she no longer has to work abroad. But this requires her to have clear thoughts about the fact that for now, her plans aren't feasible and she must, therefore, hand the child over to protecting hands, otherwise all the financial plans and work plans as well as all newly started determinations will be null and void. Billy says man, just how should I say that how should I explain that to her? Quetzal says talk with her calmly and rationally. Billy says you say that so easily. Quetzal says I know very well that she is very sensitive and, unfortunately, only too often works herself up over things that are quite unreasonable and that could generally be contained and resolved completely by a few clear thoughts. In this regard, she should truly strive much more. Billy says however, I may not talk about it, for once again, I whistle from the last holes. I think that I will collapse by the end of the year. Quetzal says you don't let yourself be helped, 
so your breakdown is predetermined. Billy says I went to the doctor, too high blood pressure, and as a remedy for this, so said the doctor, I need quite a lot of hassle. Quetzal says your appearance is also appropriate. You necessarily have to keep yourself from straining your nerves, getting excited, or overexerting yourself. I'll talk with Electra about the fact that she very greatly moderates the speed of the named transmissions and controls you with regard to your state. I will also strive, against your will, for a control, so that you aren't overexerted by us. Moreover, you should think once again of my words, that you urgently need a lot of sleep and fresh air. So go for long walks and the like. Billy says you begin to preach again, my son. Quetzal says it is, however, my earnestness, and now, we should lose no more words over that. Here, you can wear these clothes and these footwear, then, we'll go for a walk together at the suitable place. Billy says you are, indeed. Quetzal says no, it is my earnestness. So, we are at the place. It's cold outside, so take the clothes and shoes. I won't bring you back before we have walked for two hours. Billy says then I just march, my friend. Quetzal says you would have to do that for a long time, since we are here in the Canadian wilderness. Billy says man, you really crazy. Quetzal says you say yourself burned children shy away from the fire. Think of the last episode when you should walk. But now, come. The end.